To combat the threat of agile predators, giants like this plant-eater Tenontosaurus had to move fast to or perish. Some dinosaur detectives see this as evidence that they were just like the active mammals of today. Others are not so sure. The giant Brachiosaurus may provide some clues to the pace of dinosaurs. Can you really apply these arguments to animals this size, a 40 or 30 ton dinosaur? I think not. I think there are actually models for these sorts of creatures which much more fit them to being a classic reptile. We know that the head was able to be craned up some 30 to 35 feet above the ground to reach the tops of the trees they fed on. Now, if the animal has its brain and head at that height, then there's an enormous distance that the blood has to travel to get up to the brain, and the, the heart will therefore have to generate a great deal of pressure to push the blood up that height. That gives the animals potential for a great deal of activity. So these actually are pretty wondrous animals because they're combining some of the best attributes of the animals that are so active today, the mammals and birds, with the economy of lifestyle that's associated with a reptile. Basically, they're dinosaurs, and that makes them something very special. It was an egg that led Jack Horner to discover that dinosaurs were complex animals. They cared for and reared their young. It was a well, bones like these that led an inquiring Bob Bakker to an even more radical idea. Until he came along, most dinosaur detectives assumed that dinosaurs were like lizards and crocodiles, were cold-blooded, in other words. But in 1970s, he began a revolution. He came up with an idea, well, that's still controversial today. Bob, your idea <laughs> is that these things were warm-blooded, huh? Well, absolutely. I I grew up in the fourth grade with brontosaurus like this in the Life magazine. Gray, stupid, slow, up to its armpits in some fetid swamp. But when I got to studying the guy, I found out that nose to tail and shoulder to toes, they had it all wrong. It's saw in color. And animals that see in color have bright colors to attract mates. So don't think of brontosaurus as gray. Think of the bull brontosaurus in some brilliant crimson or bright blue or a metallic green to attract a mate. Now, if you get into the heart of the matter, I mean, literally, I'm going to crawl into the cardiac chamber here, you see something astonishing. And when, I, when the penny dropped and I realized this, I just kicked myself. Why didn't I think of this before? This chamber here in the front of the chest, well, there's only one organ there, the heart. Let me come up there and have sure. a closer look at that. <laughs> have a heart to heart here. This gigantic chamber housed a heart that would be hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Today, only warm-blooded active animals have huge hearts. And going aft, the hip socket, wonderful joint, designed to let this whole hind leg swing backwards and forwards in an efficient, well, like a pendulum. Hmm. This suggesting that the animal was far more active than our idea of this sloth-like creature. Absolutely. This... Absolutely. Evolution is very, um, is very careful. Evolution doesn't build in excess stuff. It's not like the Pentagon. There are no cost overruns in Brontosaurus. Natural selection worked on this beast to give it the knee and the thigh and the lungs and the heart that it needed. And it gave them warm-blooded specifications. Pound for pound, there's more strength in these legs than there is in a modern elephant. And much more strength than in a, than a cold-blooded tortoise. This is a biological machine designed for pumping, for moving with tremendous activity.
never like this in my day. <laughs> I'll tell you, with, now with the use of songs and dances and games and visuals of all kinds of these youngsters through the use of dinosaurs are learning about the world around them in a way that's absolutely astounding to, uh, well, to dinosaurs like me. The work of dinosaur detectives has turned dinosaurs into learning tools. Children all over the world can now explore their fantasies and learn at the same time. In southern France, in the sleepy town of Esperanza, the tranquility is deceptive. Here, too, lies a mystery that has captured the imagination of the local community. Uh, Gwen. Hi, Gwen. It's being unraveled by these children and their very special teacher as they piece together the clues in the classroom at the hills nearby. Gwen. Just outside the town is a dinosaur nesting site, which the children have made their own. So many eggs have been found that it has put Esperanza on the map and made these junior dinosaur detectives the talk of France. All children are interested in dinosaurs. That's true. Everyone is aware of it from 7 to 77. Those in Esperanza in particular, because they have had the opportunity to touch the bones and the eggs on the site. Superbe! <laughs> The eggs are those of a giant Hypsilosaurus. Yet for all their size, they must have tiptoed with great daintiness between nests crowded with babies. Such discoveries may bring fame and fortune to Esperanza. The eggs may be the key to its economic future. In fact, what you've seen today is only an exhibition, a small temporary exhibition. But the town council, the mayor, have much more important plans for exhibiting the whole of the collections. We hope to create a museum of the upper valley of the Old, a regional museum of great importance, which is likely to bring a revival, a lift, to the economy of Esperanza, which has great need of it. And we think that this museum will attract many tourists, many people from all over Europe. In America, too, the thrill of a fossil find can capture the minds of children. Some already are dinosaur detectives in the making. Isn't that where you found yours there? Yeah. Well, sit down. I'd like to hear more about how you found it. One day, me and my dad was walking down the, the street, and um, I saw um, these teeth, like right in here, sticking out in the in the uh, rock. That's a pretty neat job. These dinosaurs are pretty interesting. This this one that you found, Thad is a plant-eating dinosaur. It's probably about uh, about 113 million years old or so. This other one that you found was a plant-eater as well. This was a little baby. It was found washed out to sea and is only about uh, maybe uh, 98 million years old or something like that. Why do you like dinosaurs? I wanted to find out what animals ate, what other kind of animals. What do you want to be when you grow up, Dad? I might be a dinosaur finder, a paleontologist, a scientist that finds bones. Well, you know, a lot of people find fossil dinosaurs when they're just out looking. A lot of them. You don't have to be a paleontologist to find one. You can just be someone that likes to look. From the earliest pioneers, it's been dedicated amateurs who have often made the most spectacular finds. Searching out dinosaur bones is a passion of Kathy Wankel. Her obsession paid off one weekend while exploring the badlands of Montana. It was Labor Day weekend of 1988. My husband and I were hiking around this area where I had spotted a small ridge of white sticking out of the dirt. We walked over about in this area I knew it was a dinosaur bone. I could see the bone marrow, and uh, I had picked up fossils before, and I just knew it was. And I was 
really hoping it was a T-Rex. I, I just had a feeling that it might be. I don't know if 